Hello, friends. <laughs> My name is Shonda Davis. I am a nutrition educator with Central State University Extension, and I work with FNEP. FNEP is an acronym for Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program. And today's lesson, we will be discussing plan, shop, and how to plan, shop, and save for healthy meals and snacks um, that are budget friendly. When you're planning, um, you want to make your shopping list. Try to um, remember these things. Write down all of the foods that you um, will need for the week or for the month, and write down the amounts of food that you will need. And remember to pay attention, if you're making any special recipes, pay attention to the quantity of foods that you're going to need. Um, especially if you're going to double a recipe or triple a recipe, because a lot of times people will take a recipe to the store and they'll just get what's on the recipe and then they'll forget, oh, I need an extra of this or I need an extra of that. Um, always check your refrigerator and your freezer and always check your cupboards. Make sure you check your cupboards because you don't want to purchase things that you already have on hand. Okay. Um, also, planning helps you save time and it saves you money. Um, money is very hard to come by, as we all know. Um, we all work hard and we all want to save some. So when we're talking about food dollars, we need to be smart with those as well. Um, by planning ahead, we are more likely to uh, get all the foods we need for the meals that we need for the week, meals and snacks that we need either for the week or maybe even for the month. Careful planning helps us to also, uh, again, save our food dollars wisely so that we will have more money for, for the entire month. How do we start with a plan? Some people don't know how to start with a plan. Um, you usually just go in a store and just pick up things. But if you can try to learn to plan, it's gonna save you time, really, and a, a whole lot more money. Um, many people don't think that a plan is necessary when they're doing grocery shopping, but it is very, very important. Remember to keep a list of your family's favorite foods, favorite foods and snacks, and use this list often. But don't use this list too often because then your family could get tired of those foods and snacks and then you got to kind of start over. So um, maybe try to think of something new that can be incorporated into your uh, meals. Um, think of um, a new recipe. Maybe find a new recipe and try that with your family. And then you can add that to your week for your, on your grocery list. Let's see. You may want to try um, to even do a new recipe once every other week or once every two weeks or every, every, every month or something. So until they can get used to trying new things. Also try making a list of a variety of different meals and snacks and you could then um, get those grocery items while you're in the store as well. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about grocery flyers and coupons. Um, most current, the current grocery stores uh, have weekly sale flyers, and you can use these flyers to, uh, along with your grocery list, to find things that you might need that are on sale, okay? Now, the flyers also will show you not only the items that are on sale, but that you know that are on sale or that you need, but things that you may not think that you need that are on sale or things that you didn't know you need that were on sale. Now, we talk about sales. Who doesn't like a sale, right? I like one. Um, so buy only, remember to also buy only the amounts of foods that you will use, you will need, and you know that you will use. Don't buy anything that you know you're not gonna use because it's a waste of food dollars. Flyers also show fruits and vegetables that are in season. Um, when you buy fruits and vegetables that are in season, they're more cost effective, they're a little bit uh, cost, less, less costly, and they also taste great. So don't forget that many stores also have mobile apps. Um, you can download mobile apps on your smartphone and pull up your uh, grocery stores, or you can even go online and register, and they can mail you uh, coupons and things in the mail. Now, if you're a couponer, which I'm not, you can cut out coupons. That comes, because it can be a, a timely job. It can be really um, costly, co costing you a lot of time. I don't have time to do that. So, um, remember to take with you to the grocery store a list. So, I have a list here that's broken down into the five food groups 
based off of the MyPlate principle. We have fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and your dairy. And then we also have other items, okay? These are other things that you might need, ancillary items in your home. These are really nice if you can put them somewhere close to your refrigerator and you can remember, um, oh, I ran out of this, put it on your list. That way you can start your list for the next week. Also remember when you take your grocery list, you got to take a pen because you want to mark off those things you already purchased. Or else you might be running around the store thinking, did I get this? Did I get that? That's a waste of time. Also, bring a calculator. If you don't have a smartphone, get a cheap one from the Dollar Tree. They're only a buck. Um, and then you could uh, be able to add up what you're, what you're spending and keep track of your food dollars as well. Check out your farmer's markets. Most farmer's markets accept a EBT and they have a program called um, Produce Perks where you're getting twice as much for your dollar. So you're getting, say, two pounds of apples for a pound. So that's a whole lot cheaper than then you're going to get those perks and then be able to use your EBT. Remember to never shop when you're hungry. Hungry people buy stuff that they really don't need. Um, or they shouldn't need, they shouldn't need. And it's a waste, again, of your food dollars. Because then when you buy something that you just wanted because you were hungry, what about that next meal that you need for the following week? Um, and then you could also end up making those other impulse purchases, and then um, you won't be able to spend those food dollars on things that you have on your grocery list. Always remember, stick to your list and exercise food safety as well. And when we're talking about food safety, we want to talk about... Um, one, we want to always wash your hands before you're preparing your meals. We want to always um, wash your fruits and vegetables. So let's talk about a little bit, a few food, food safety points. Whenever you're shopping, it's very important to remember the following. Don't buy your canned goods that have dents, rust, bulges, or uh, cans are leaking. If you find canned items like these in these conditions, do not purchase these items, even if they um, are at a very low cost. Most canned items like this need to be brought to the attention of the management so they can be removed from the shelves. Um, canned items like these would surely be expired and are not good for consumption. Always re put refrigerated and frozen foods away first. Cook your meat, poultry, and fish within two days and you will need to store them or you will need to store them in the freezer. Remember when shopping to keep your raw meat and poultry separated from your fresh fruits and veggies, and always wash your fruits and veggies. Finally, do not store foods or drinks in any type of glazed pottery that has been made outside of the United States. Some of us have children that are, that are picky eaters, and we all know how challenging this can be. We all know that children are natural helpers, and whenever they are asked or either allowed to be, they will be more than happy to help you out in the kitchen. And in order to combat issues with a picky eater, you might want to try the following. Children are more likely to eat meals and snacks that they're able to help plan and prepare. So ask your kiddos and grandchildren um, when you go to the grocery store or even in the kitchen, come on, go with me. And so we can learn how to do this together. All right. Also, have them choose something that they would like to help prepare and try to utilize the My Plate principles. My plate briefly says, half your plate should be fruits and veggies. Then you have your grains, and your, your uh, protein, and your dairy. When you use the My Plate principles at an early age, it will help them to make healthier choices at a very early age, and then it will carry them through, through adulthood. Make a meal that's fun and colorful. Um, working in the kitchen with children can be an awesome experience for them as well as for you, because we can also learn from children. Um, and that will stay with them forever. So, so start with them at an early age, and the younger they are, the better it will be for them. This could very well help them to continue making healthier food choices and developing healthier lifestyles that will go into adulthood. Also, we're going to talk now about uh, unit pricing. Unit pricing is a really cool idea when you're talking about saving money. Um, unit pricing is what, when you take the cost uh, per ounce of, of an item and then um, or by the measure. So say for instance the cost is $1.49 and you have 29 ounces. So you divide that 
cost by the 29 ounces to get your out, price per ounce. And you can usually find out things that are cheaper that way. Um, and it may be a, a national brand. It may be a generic brand. So not always is generic or, or, or excuse me, value price brand um, uh, a, better, a better option. So there is an app on, that we have with Eating Smart Being Active. And it's called the Eating Smart Being Active, Active app. And you can download that on your smartphone. Now, there is a unit pricing tool on that, on the, in that app. Um, it's located under the calculator function. So you can use that when you're in a grocery store too, instead of having to try to figure it out in your head. You can just put it in the app and it'll figure it out for you. And let's see. Please understand though, that some stores, um, unit pricing, unit pricing only, only compares the price and not the quality. A lot of people would, like to believe that because it is a value price brand that the quality may not be as good as a national brand. And that's not necessarily true. But the unit pricing will also tell you the best purchase to make um, per ounce. So you, so you can decide what you're getting per ounce. Um, is, it more, is it more cost effective? You can also use unit pricing to compare the price of different products, whether they are different sizes, they're different brands, they're different forms. For instance, like shredded cheese versus a block of cheese. Most people kind of figure the shredded cheese is gonna cost a little bit more because it's already shredded. So if you just don't know for sure, try the unit pricing tool and then you'll be able to find out for yourself. And in summary, to save money at the grocery store, you wanna to remember to do these things. Buy in season, check prices at the farmer's market, check your store flyers, Buy frozen juice concentrate, buy your store brands, and prepare fruits and vegetables for yourself. All right, friends, this is it for today. 